Um, this is the material that you'll be tested on over here. Chapters 10 through 17.1. We did not cover chapter 16, so obviously that's not on the exam. But um, everything that we covered in these chapters here will be on the final. So you'll see questions all over the place. Um, most of the questions are multiple choice. You do have... 70 multiple choice, just like the midterm. And then you also have those three short answer questions. The multiple choice questions are worth 1.2 points each. And the short answer questions are worth five points each. You have to answer three of them. So try to get the short answer questions out of the way first, since they are worth a little bit more. I put them as the first question on the final exam, just so you don't forget about them. So they show up first, but you can always flag it and come back to it later if you don't want to answer them first, that's fine. So you do have two hours to complete it. It is, this test is worth 17 and a half percent of your grade. So um, exams, midterm and final, together they're worth 35% of your overall grade. So if you didn't do so well on the midterm exam back in October, this is your chance to bring up that exam grade. If you do well on the final exam, that'll definitely boost your grade up. Um, you do have one attempt. One attempt. So once you begin, you have to finish. And once you hit that two hour mark, the exam will automatically submit. So if you're halfway through writing a short answer question, your exam will just submit like that and you won't have any um, any time to finish it. So that's why I'm saying to get your short answer questions out of the way first, since they are worth more points. You do have some study guides and study links on Moodle, and I'm going to show you those in a little bit. Um, we are going to play quizzes at the end of this, but um, I'll show you those other links as well. Are there any questions so far about like how the test is set up, um, so on and so forth? If we were to take this test in person, I usually, I usually allow students to have a page of notes front and back. So you're welcome to do that. Don't feel bad if you are. If you do have a page of notes front and back, I do normally allow that. It actually, um, students usually tell me that just making a page of notes is a really good way to study. They tell me that afterward. They're like, once I made that page of notes, I really didn't need to use it because it was all like in my head. But um, you are welcome to use that page of notes. It, it would be great for you to write down like um, processes. So like maybe you aren't sure about DNA replication. So maybe you should write down like those things on that page of notes. Or if you have trouble understanding Punnett squares or like how to even set up a Punnett square, that might be something to put on that page of notes. So things like like a process are, um, are good to put on that note page. Oops. My pen doesn't want to work again. Okay. So short answer questions, you have three of them. They're worth five points each for a total of 15. Um, so let's take a look. So these are some examples from the midterm. And I think we looked at these last time, maybe not. Um, so these two students got one out of five points. Pretty much if you write a sentence or two, you're going to get at least a point for trying. Um, I don't give zero points very often. I don't think I've ever given zero points for an answer. As long as you're referencing what is in the question, you'll get a point. So even if you have no idea um, how to answer the question, write something that you know. Like if you don't know anything about an enzyme or a vitamin, write something you know about a vitamin, you'll likely get at least a point. So don't just let it um, go unanswered. But Five out of five points typically look like this. They might be a long answer like this. This student kind of went above and beyond. Um, but this is a pretty good five out of five because if you look down here, 
they're using complete sentences, specific nouns, so they're referencing like coenzymes, cofactors, um, and they answered all parts of the question. So they answered the first part, why they're necessary for good health, and they also gave examples. So make sure you do all of those things, answer all parts of the question. If you only answer like half of the question, I can only give you half of the points, right? And I can only give you like two and a half points if you only answer two and a half points worth of the question. So make sure you read back over the question before you're finished answering it. So if you want to practice writing one, here's one that we used. Uh, let's see, I think I used this last year. Um, this is a question about cloning. So the question is, woolly mammoths have been extinct for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. An expedition team has found a pristine specimen preserved in ice for a long period of time. So your job is to clone the mammoth with the aid of a living relative, an elephant. So what process would you use to clone the mammoth and then outline the steps and then describe what the new individual will look like? So there are three different parts of this question. So by what process would you clone the mammoth? Well, um, by just like planning it out, we would do reproductive cloning because we're gonna make a whole new organism. And we could write that too. We could say, um, because new, new organism. Um, so then the second question, outline the steps so we would take DNA from the mammoth, we'd insert it into an empty elephant egg, and then we would put that egg into a surrogate elephant mother, right? So that's the steps of reproductive cloning. And then the third part, what would the new individual look like? Well, we hope, hopefully it will look like a mammoth, right? That's our, that's our whole um, goal for this. So that's our plan. Um, you won't get very many points if you just write this um, jotty stuff here. So this down bottom is really what's going to get you those points. So just put your plan into complete sentences. So that's a really good answer for this question. And I'm not gonna read it all, but um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for. So it might help for you to um, use like the tools of Moodle. When you're answering your question, you have some tools up ahead, up above where it's like bold or italicized, or you can even like change the colors of the font. So you can use those tools to your advantage if it helps you to like italicize different parts of the question or different or make the font different colors. You can use those. Use what you have at your disposal anything to get those good points, right? Um, so again, get the most points for your short answer questions since they are worth the most. Make sure you read back over your answer and read back over the question before you submit them. And don't wait till the last minute to, um, to finish those short answer questions. Since many of you, I could tell many of you time cut off and you were in the middle of answering and you only have two hours. Everybody has two hours, so make sure you get them done. Uh, multiple choice questions are worth 1.2 points each. Make sure you read them carefully. Read all the answer choices before you choose one. Flag any of those that are um, that are tripping you up. If, if one's, one question is really hard, just flag it and move on to the next question. If you have to guess, hopefully you can narrow it down to like a few, few um, answer choices. Um, but anyway, so questions are usually pulled from your assignments, like your labs, quizzes, reading, poll questions, book, whatever. Um, and then make sure you use your study guide. So I'm going to show you how to see those things on Tutor. And I'm going to show you some other things that I put up on Moodle for you as well. Um, after we do the quizzes, of course. So um, how to ace the multiple choice, I already pretty much went over all this already, but make sure you read the question carefully again. 
read the answer choices carefully. Read all of them before you choose one. Um, make sure you, if you have time, if you finish the test in, in an hour and a half, use those last 30 minutes to go back over some of the answer choices. Use all your time wisely. You only have one go with the final exam, so make sure you make it a good one. It is a big chunk of your grade. Um, all right, so yep, study ahead of time. Make sure you have enough time to answer questions by studying ahead of time so that you're not fumbling over words and whatnot. Class there. Um, this is the YouTube playlist that I created for Bio 111. So these are these are um, usually the videos I pick out for like my completely online courses and I put them all in the playlist in order so you can watch them as we learn them. Um, obviously it starts with like chapter one. Final exam starts at chapter 10, right? So you would have to start at, let's see, at what are chromosomes? That would start with chapter 10. So if you want to look at the YouTube playlist, if you want to watch all of them, great. That's going to take you a while, though. So I would just pick the ones that you're um, uneasy with. Use your summary on quizzes. So like the topics that you might not have been so great at on quizzes. I would watch those videos on YouTube. Okay, so there's lots of them. And I did kind of like break them down. So if you want to watch just like transcription, you can watch the video on transcription. If you want to watch translation, so on and so forth. So there's multiple videos per chapter, but they're usually short and they're just segments of each chapter. Um, let's see. Tutor. Let's look at tutor. Exit that. Exit that. Okay. So when you log into Tutor, right now we don't have any more assignments, but you can still log into Tutor and use it. Um, one great thing is this over here, the, the for, um, performance forecast. You can practice your weakest topics, and that's probably going to be the most helpful thing for you when you're studying. If you click on it, it might take you to questions that are from a while ago. Um, luckily, this one started me off at chapter 15, but it might give you some questions that are from a while ago. Um, there's, I'm sorry, there's no way to, to correct that, but um, that will give you the questions that have like your reds and yellows. And so what I mean by reds and yellows, if you click on all topics, the yellows are, um, they said almost there, so like things that you need to work on. And then the reds are the things that you need to keep trying at. So maybe those those are the ones that you should start with first, or the keep trying, and then go to the yellows after that. You can also, if we go back to the dashboard, we can also go to browse the book down here at the bottom. And The only thing is that the textbook does not have an answer key, which kind of stinks. But there are review questions at the end of each chapter that you can look at. So those are available for you. Um, yeah, there's not an answer key, I don't think. Periodic table, geologic index. I don't think it's back here. Let's see. No. Okay. Yeah, so there's no answer key, but there are review questions. And if you want to just like read a section of the textbook, that's there too. Um, let's see. This is the study guide that I put up on Moodle. Goes, um, I, I divided it by chapter. And you can just go through it. I put it up as a Word document. so. You, you're welcome to download it and type in it however you want. Um, but I just went through the final exam and I just jotted down the things that you need to know for the final exam. So this, these are things that will definitely be on the final. 
So this would be a really great thing to keep handy while you study on Tutor. Um, are there any, like anything that we need to go over? We have like 12 or so minutes left. If there are topics on this, this study guide that you're like unsure of, or you just need me to like explain it again, I can do that. Um, but one thing that helps is to repeat the like the definition or repeat the process over and over and over again because eventually you'll remember it. So I always think of like Dory, P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby, Wallaby Way, Sydney. She kept saying it over and over and over and she remembered it finally word for word. So kind of like a new song, like when you hear a song the first time, you don't really remember the words, but every time you hear the song again and again and again, you eventually remember all of the words. So repetition, repetition, repetition is key to studying. And that's like the last thing that I want to say, I think, 